Good evening. It is very strong a feeling that so many times we are in another country, although we are in this country. Tonight we have the opportunity of really make a long travel, a uh, long travel in wisdom, in distance, in space, in our hearts, in truth. This is all the elements that are concentrated in the presence of a Holy Mother that we have invited here and we are very grateful that we have you all the way from one of the oldest civilizations. You know, we are very proud that we are members of a very old civilization and very rarely we realize how other old civilizations shine in other places in the world. So we do welcome you here along with the truth you, ca you carry for us. We would like to ask you about this truth in the way you see this same world, this other country, which is every country, which is our heart. We have to know one thing, what the truth is. The truth is, actually we are not this body, mind, intellect, emotions, ego, but we are the spirit. And in our evolutionary process, we have reached the stage of human awareness. And beyond this, there's a little breakthrough by which we have to become the spirit. That's very simple and can be done very easily for people who are seeking the truth. How would you describe the system of your thought, the system that you approach our hearts and our minds? Yes. You'll be amazed to know that in Greece, people called a bone sacrum, which is a triangular bone. And that's, that means they knew there was something sacred about that bone. Now this bone has got within itself a residual power which is for our connection to this all-pervading divine power. All the scriptures have talked about all-pervading divine love and everything, but we have never felt it before. It's a surprising thing that we take all living things for granted, for our heart beats. We don't know how it beats. Uh, you see the flowers grow, we don't know how it grows. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you understand that there is some power which is doing all this living work, then the time has come for us to know it, to feel it, to understand it, and also to use it. How do you think that people have arrived in so many conclusions that they call religions? And what is the connection between this way of approaching ourselves, of the truth which is one, and your old tradition in your country, which I assume is India? Now, in all the religions and scriptures is written that you have to transform, you have to be born again. Every religion has said that. This is not only that any particular religion has said it. Every religion, even Islam, has said you have to be a wali. Even Christianity has said you have to be born again. I mean, there's no religion which has not said that. But it is not just a certificate. You cannot take just a certificate and a born again. It is something that actualizes by which you develop a new state, a new state of your mind, state of your being, by which you become the spirit and there are powers of the spirit which you manifest. It's not just talking and giving sermons and lectures, but it is something that's an actualization, is a living process. Mm -hmm. I think we Greeks belong to the, what we call the East part of philosophy, of religions. This is a system which is uh, mostly esoteric. This is a very a Greek word, which is seeking inside. I think this is quite relevant and close to the very uh, ancient Indian tradition. Yes, of course. Now, how close do you think these, these very old religious systems are? I'm talking about the, the pagan, our own ancestors, yeah. before Christianity, um, even the Jewish or, or the other Hindu, Buddhist and the rest you know. You see, especially in Greece, you had the ancient system of worshipping the goddess Athena. Now in Sanskrit, Atham is the primordial. So to us, she is a primordial mother that we call in our language as Adi Shakti. She is the primordial mother. And she has, you must see a snake in her shield. 
and also in her hand. That is the symbol of this power within you which lies dormant in your in your triangular bone called a sacrum. So the Greeks knew about it, no mm -hmm. doubt, because otherwise they would not have called her Athena and she must have been. In our uh, scriptures she is described very well. Not only that, but Greece is called as Manipur, Greek mm -hmm. means uh, the level of the universe. Yes. And certainly, it, it was a surprise for me to see that you come here to preach our own ancient gods. Yes, yes. Now, what are you telling us about Athena is that the, the serpents, serpents with Greek gods are very familiar creatures. Yes. Um, having to do with medicine and others. Now, what is the message of Athena coming from you again nowadays? Okay. Athena is the one that she is the one who, who was trying to push her uh, spear into the fontanel bone of Zeus. Mm -hmm. Now that's exactly what Sir Jogai is. We think, uh, not we believe, and that we have proved also, that this power which we call as Kundalini, because mm -hmm. it is uh, like a serpent uh, going into coils. Yes. Because it's an energy that moves like a serpent. You see, more symbolic it is, not the serpent actually. Mm -hmm. So. This is the power which is the reflection of Athena within us. And when she rises, she goes and hits here and opens out your fontanel bone. That's actualization of the baptism as described in Christianity. Mm -hmm. By that, then you are connected with that subtle energy which is all pervading. For the first time, you start feeling that cool breeze in your hand, which is described as the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost is the same as Athena, but I think Christians could not connect it with that. She is the same. Mm -hmm. We see that all these sanctities along history come and repeat themselves and transfigurate themselves according to the tradition of peoples. Of course. Now, you have referred to yoga, and of course, in this part of the world, we are more or less familiar. Now, for those who are less, I would like you to found what we're talking now in this yoga and give us some ideas about the, the wide spectrum of what we would call yoga. You see, yoga is where you unite. It's the union between your self with the divine. It's mm -hmm. yoga. That's the real spiritual yoga. All other yogas like physical yogas and all that is a V part of what one Patanjali wrote. It's a very V part that to cleanse your body and all that is there. But there is no need now to do all that. First, uh, in the modern times, what if I have done any work like this? That people used to get self-realization, all right. But one master had only one disciple. Mm -hmm. Gradually it started uh, in a way that they started talking about it. From the, I think, 12th century it became more open but it has been there for years together. Now, when they started talking about it, they couldn't give our mass realization. They could only give to one person. So the only thing that I have done is to work out the permutations and combinations of human nature, by which I have understood how to give our mass realization. And that's the only uh, achievement of modern Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga is an ancient system in India also must have been here because the way uh, the sacrum bone is there and she's having all those things. But the practice of that may not have been so open, might have been secretive in those days where they were giving realization to people. And it's ancient times, thousands of years back. So, But in India we have still maintained all those traditions and things and we still respect and worship the uh, Mother Goddess. Athena we respect. She's called as Adi Shakti, name is different and she's the Holy Ghost according to us. Now this works out, it's in everyone, it's your own power within you and it works out and it rises and pierces through your fontanel bone area. It does. It actualizes the experience which is described and that's what one has to feel. Otherwise it's just talk, 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 talk. Any religion has become nothing but talk. So you see people are now fed up. They think what is this promising, claiming, nothing happens to us, we are just the same. Mm -hmm. Our forefathers were such and we are just the same. But now the time has come, it's a new age as I say, to achieve that state. 
a new state where you become. Firstly, you become thoughtlessly aware, means you live in the present. Thoughts come to you from the past and from the future. You are dancing on the cusp of the thoughts. But when this happens, the thoughts are separated and in between the thoughts there is a space which we call as the present, which is reality. Present is the reality because the past is finished and the future doesn't exist. So we live in the present. When you live in the present, you start growing spiritually. And that's what happens to you first, that you become thoughtlessly aware. The second thing happens to you that you start feeling that cool breeze on your hands. Now, it's medically you know that these are the endings of the sympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. So what happens that when, when you get your realization, you start feeling this cool breeze all along and you start feeling those things uh, on your fingertips. Now supposing if you have a problem in any one of these centers, there are seven centers, five, six and seven, immediately you feel it on your finger. You don't have to go to doctor for diagnosis, immediately you know. Now if you know how to cure it, then physically you can be cured, mentally you can be cured. Also, all our human problems, or I should say all the world's problems are because of human beings, all our human problems are because of our centers which are within us. So when this power rises, she nourishes them, she integrates them and corrects them. So we get physical, mental, emotional problems solved. And then you feel your own peace within yourself. But the second thing that you achieve is a new awareness which we call as collective consciousness. <clears throat> that is where you can feel not only in your own centers, but also the centers of others. Now when you grow spiritually, then sitting down here you can feel centers of anyone. Sitting down here you can correct the centers of other people, but you have to grow. But in the beginning you start feeling the joy of your being because in your heart resides the spirit and spirit is the source of joy. It is the source of absolute truth. So you know also absolute truth because on your fingertips you can ask any question. Say, they might say, was Christ the Son of God? All right, ask the question. Immediately you start getting tremendous vibrations. Surprisingly, Athena is also called as Palas. Palas means vibrations. Mm -hmm. Means she gives vibrations. So these vibrations will tell you the absolute truth. Because we live in relative world, that's why we are fighting. Once we are in the absolute, there's no fight, no, no problems. Now, this once happens, you become collectively conscious, then who is the other? Everybody is within your body. You can feel everyone within yourself. So you become a universal personality. Mm -hmm. This is the character of your spirit, because spirit is a reflection of God Almighty within you, which is in everyone. But it is just a witness till you are a realized soul. But once you become a realized soul, then it starts manifesting. It manifests and uh, you can you also raise the Kundalini of others, you can give realization to others. It's like if you enlighten one candle, that can, candle can enlighten another candle. Mm -hmm. So that's how it spreads. It is very interesting and uh, while you're talking and um, um, writing down certain things that uh, come in a contrast to what we are used to in the so-called Western world. I'm wondering the split between body and mind that we suffer is something that you do not suffer of uh, and it is, it is wonderful how people in the Far East and of course their spirit is, is not uh, schizophrenic. Yes. How do you explain and, and how can people um, come back together with their own either body or mind? Because now in this part of the world there is people who live for their bodies or people who live for their minds. They are ignorant, that's why they are in darkness, you see. They think body is very important. But I know people who have very good bodies also come to me and say, Mother, give us peace, you see, give us joy. So mm -hmm. nobody seems to be satisfied. So they are in It's the other part which is missing. But with this, the whole thing gets integrated. Your body, mind, your liver, your 
ego, everything. And the ego just disappears. You become egoless. You don't think you are doing anything. You think it's happening. It's just mm -hmm. happening. There is another idea that this sort of um, deep research brings you into a state of absolute and maybe this absolute is a monistic idea you feel by yourself or the whole world is yourself. Now listening to you I get the impression that it is exactly the opposite that you communicate with everybody. It's, it's more of a communal approach than something which is lonely. And it is, it is a miracle how, by coming into yourself, you reach out everybody else. Now, I think you would agree with me that it is wrong to think of Orient as something mystic, as something which is cut off the world. No, no, no. It's universal. Mm -hmm. Now we have 56 nations we are working with this Sajjo. Especially in Russia, surprisingly, we have thousands and thousands of Sajjo. Very recently? Yeah, very recently, about mm -hmm. three years. Within three years, we've got thousands and thousands of them. You see, I think uh, in the democratic countries, we had too much time to waste, like, you see, choices, this, that, all kinds of problems for nothing at all. While they were <coughs> limited and they had given up all this nonsense. They thought, well, whatever is available is available. Like, you see, there's, uh, there's no solution. So give it up. And that's how they're very introspective, I think. So Russia has, Russia and also Eastern Bloc people, are in thousands who got realization. Also, of course, India, they know it, so we have in thousands also. I must admit that. But <coughs> so many countries like uh, Austria, Italy especially, is now so fed up with all this going on in Italy that now they have taken to Sajoga very strongly. And all kinds of people are coming. So it is something that has to happen, was to happen, is already predicted and is taking place. Mm -hmm. And tell me, we are referring to countries with a very strong tradition um, in religion. Say Italy is a very strongly Catholic country, Russia has an orthodox um, past. How about the very different systems like Africa or like the United States of America? That you know, this is the new world in terms of a sharp difference in the way of thinking and approaching the world. How is your message delivered there? You see, actually, all these incarnations, whether it was Christ or Rama, Krishna, Muhammad, any one of them. You call, you call, you call them incarnations all of. All of them are incarnations. You see, they were born on the same tree of life, mm -hmm. of spirituality. All of them, mm -hmm. like beautiful flowers at different times. But people pluck the flowers, you see, mm -hmm. and now they're fighting with the dead flowers. So you see that there is no religion within, it's just outside, you see. We'll go to church, we can do anything, we can uh, uh, go to a mosque, we can do anything, we go to temple, do anything. I mean, there's nothing inside the religion, but with this, the inside religion is awakened, and you become righteous, mm -hmm. really become an angel, I tell you. So tell me, you become an angel, but you still live in, in this world. And, you know, there is some things that we have, we are used in referring when we talk about uh, religions. And I'm wondering whether we could refer to this way of approaching truth and uh, viewing the world as we already know. And I'm trying to uh, refer to certain fixed ideas. Religi religions have ethics and they have codes of living, codes of how you behave, how you make love, what is a sin, what is not a sin. Now, what is your approach in all these things? See, my approach is such that by all the, they have failed completely. Nobody does that. See, it's a fact we should face. Actually, when it is within, then you become your own master. Mm -hmm. You yourself know, like I would say an example. Supposing I'm holding a snake and there's darkness I can't see. Now you tell me it's a snake. I will not accept that. I say, no, no, it's not a snake. I'm holding a rope, suppose. But if there's little li light, I'll immediately leave it. You don't have to tell me anything. In the same way, when we are enlightened, you see for yourself, we have seen people overnight giving up, overnight giving up drugs, overnight. Once they get realization, just, I don't have to tell them. They themselves wait because they have their own life.